very quickly finishing up the fifth chapter of The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White. Merlin and the wart are a fish. They are on their way to see the king of the moat. The wart began to hang behind his conductor a little, a little, and perhaps it was just as well that he did, for they were almost on top of their destination before he noticed it. When he did see the old despot, he stared back in horror, for Mr. M was four feet long, his weight incalculable. The great body, shadowy and almost invisible among the stems, ended in a face which had been ravaged by all the passions of an absolute monarch, by cruelty, sorrow, age, pride, selfishness, loneliness, and, loneliness, and thoughts too strong for individual brains. There he hung or hovered, his vast, ironic mouth, permanently drawn downward in a kind of melancholy, his lean, clean-shaven chops giving him an American expression, like that of Uncle Sam. He was remorseless, disillusioned, logical, predatory, fierce, pitiless. But he had great jewel of an eye. But his great jewel of an eye was that of a stricken deer, large, fearful, sensitive, and full of griefs. He made no movement whatever, but looked upon them with this bitter eye. The wart thought to himself that he did not care for Mr. M. Lord, said Merlin, not paying any attention to his nervousness, I have brought a young professor who would learn to profess. To profess what? inquired the king of the moat, slowly, hardly opening his jaws and speaking through his nose. Power, said the tench. Let him speak for himself. Please, said the wart, I, I don't know what I ought to ask. There is nothing, said the monarch except the power that you profess to seek, power to grind and power to digest, power to seek and power to find, power to await, power to claim, all power and pitilessness springing from the nape of the neck. Thank you, said the wart. Love is a trick played on us by the forces of evolution, continued the monster monotonously. Pleasure is the bait laid down by the same. There is only power. Power is of the individual mind, but the mind's power alone is not enough. The power of strength decides everything in the end, and only might is right. Now I think it is time you should go away, young master, for I find this conversation exceedingly exhausting. I think you ought to go away really almost at once, in case my great disillusioned mouth should suddenly determine to introduce you to my great gills which have teeth in them also. Yes, I really think you ought to go away this moment. Indeed, I think you ought to put your very back into it, and so a long farewell to all my greatness. The wart had found himself quite hypnotized by all these long words and hardly noticed that the thin-lipped, tight mouth was coming closer and closer to him all the time. It came imperceptibly as the cold, suave words distracted his attention, and suddenly it was looming within an inch of his nose, on the last sentence it opened, horrible and vast, the thin skin stretching ravenously from bone to bone and tooth to tooth. Inside there seemed to be nothing but teeth, sharp teeth like thorns in rows and ridges everywhere, like the nails in laborers' boots. It was only at the very last second that he was able to regain his own will, to pull himself together, to recollect his instructions, and to escape. All those teeth closed behind him at the tip of his tail, and he gave the hardiest jackknife he had ever given. In a second, he was on dry land once more, standing beside Merlin on the drawbridge, panting in all his clothes. And that's the end of chapter 5.